So I'm going to tell you how to make uh, sliders and also check buttons. So what is a slider? Well, when you're on a website and you've got something you can slide from a scale of 1 to 100 or 1 to 10, that essentially is a slider. How do we make them? Well, you can make a vertical slider easy. So we'll say, we'll call it def default vert, as in default vertical. And we'll just say that we want to put a scale because you know it gives you a scale we put it in our window and we need to give it a from and a to argument so we're going to say from underscore i'm not sure why but it makes us do from underscore is equal to i don't know we'll start at zero and it goes to 20 right quite simple that's all we need to do and then I would recommend that you pack it on its own line because it goes a bit weird if you don't. Don't know why, but it just does. And you'll see what I mean by a scale or a scalar, right? So that's a default vertical. It goes from zero to twenty, and it's a vertical scalar. You can actually get the value with, you know, a click if you really want to. I'll show you how to do that later. First of all, I'll make a horizontal scalar and then I'll just put it into a button as you've seen me do a million times before. We'll get the value as well with the button. Sorry, we'll, yeah, we'll get the value with the button. That's what we'll do. So I'll keep the default vertical and then we'll make a hurry. We'll just call it hurry, which will just mean horizontal. And we'll make our window, make the scale, I don't know, we'll make it zero to 10 and um, we actually need one more argument and that's orient and we have to put that it's horizontal but we actually have to type horizontal for some reason we have to type it in full caps i don't really know why but we just do hurry dot pack and we've got a horizontal here and you'll see both the versions let me just make a bit of space there you'll see both horizontal and vertical First one will be vertical, second one will be horizontal. There's our vertical that goes from 0 to 20. And there's a horizontal that goes from 0 to 10. Right. Quite easy to make, as you've seen. Now, we actually want to use these values, let's say. So we get a button that just gets those values or does something with those values. So we'll make a button here. We'll just say, I don't know, we'll just make a button. We'll just make a generic button, shall we? Uh, window text is equal to whatever. We'll say get the value of... Which one do we want? We'll just, we'll just go for the horizontal of Hori. We'll get the value of Hori. And we'd normally get a command, but we'll put that on. In a second and then we'll define something that will get the value of horizontal so we'll say define hurry get and all we're going to do is we're just going to say that we're going to make a label and it's going to have a window and its text is going to be equal to hurry dot get quite simple we're just going to pack that. Easy. That's all we want and that's all we need. And we'll add this command, which is called, what's it called? Hori get. And you'll see that it gets its value. Okay. So we've got Hori get. We'll set it to four. Ah, uh, uh, five. And we got five there. Got eight there. Got zero. Ten. Blah, blah, blah. So you can see that we can get the values of these sliders. We could have done it with the vertical slider, but I don't think I really need to show you. You can just copy paste and you can probably work out ways to get these values, manipulate them and mess around with them. I would recommend packing your, uh, your, your scaled widgets on a separate line to the one you rank them in because otherwise they end up getting some really weird uh, sort of graphical errors. You'll, you'll see that if you try to um, make these windows without uh, make these uh, scalars uh, pack these scalars on the same lines that you make them in yeah you'll definitely see those problems anyway that's really it for the sliders now let's go on to the check button so i'll just copy and paste this i'll get rid of the scalar 
underneath it. Underneath here we'll put it. And we'll just get rid of this scale. Because who cares about the scale? And we're just going to make a simple check button. Now these check buttons are similar to radio boxes. Uh, radio buttons in the sense that they need um, a variable. So we're going to use a variable. We're going to call it an int var. You'll see why. And by the way, a check button, just so you know, is... You know how we use the radio buttons? Well, you, you get those radio buttons where you've got some choices and you've got the check buttons where you, you can you can click it and it'll tick it and you can click it to untick it. That's what a check button is. But you'll see you'll see what we mean by check buttons or what I mean by check buttons once we get into it. Right? They also return a value of 0 or 1. If they're on, I think they return a value of 1, i.e. they're checked. And if they're off, i.e. they're not checked, they return a value of zero. So we need an int var because their default value is zero. You can change that and I'll show you how to change that in a little while. So we're going to make our checkbox. We'll just call it F check as in default checkbox. We're going to make a check button here. We're going to make it into the window. And we're going to give it some text. So we'll say that text is equal to generic check button right and we need to set the variable as being equal to var quite simple and then we're gonna make def check we're just gonna pack it into this window this is the first window here you're just gonna make that so you can see what a check button looked like if you didn't understand my description there we are we've got a generic check button and every time I click that, it actually changes the value of var. You can't see it, but it does change the value of var. So how am I going to prove that to you? Well, I can copy and paste this and make a button as I've made a million times before. Okay. So we've got our int var. And we'll get a button. And we'll make it, we'll put it into the window. We'll say the text is equal to value of check button it's not in capitals but it doesn't really matter we'll add a command to it which we'll define above we'll call it check quite simple and we'll pack that onto the screen right and we'll define check here we'll define check as how uh, should we define it i guess we'll just make a label and we'll go onto the window and the text will simply just be equal to var.get which is our variable here very very simple stuff now let's run it okay so we've got our generic check button and when it's unchecked we can check our value here and oh, check it again that's gone a bit weird so I'm not going to use that method. I'm just I'm actually going to print it instead. I'll ju we'll just print the value because we don't really need to mess around with it. Var dot get. So we'll print that value. Let's print the value. Let's see what actually comes out. So we get a one when it's checked, as I've said before, and we get a zero when it isn't checked. Right? Not checked. Prints out the zeros checked it's one okay so they start generically with a one or a zero as a value but we can actually change them in a sense uh, i'm just going to close this we can change those default values if we want i'll show you how to do that and it actually requires us to use a different uh, variable type so you know Obviously, we've got int type, we've got string type, we've got other types as well. We're going to call the variable var2, just, uh, just so we can separate them. And we're actually going to make it equal to a string var. So we'll make it a string var. And we'll say def check2, just, you know, so it looks like it's a different one. Okay, we'll call it check2 as well. We'll change this variable. And what we actually have to do here is we've got to add two more... Uh, parameter. So there's one that's called on value, and that changes the value of uh, the checkbox when it's when it's checked, essentially, right? And we're just going to change that to checked as a string.
string. And then we get off value, so when it's not checked, this is the value. So we'll say not checked is the value. And notice that these are string values. And for that reason, we need this variable that we're using, var2, not var, uh, to actually be a string var and not an int var. Let's open that up now. And let's print this out. Let's see what we get when we print it out. So that hasn't really printed anything. Hold on. We check that. Uh, we uncheck it and it's not checked. And when we print it, we get checked. Checked and not checked, checked and not checked. See that? Now, it's a weird peculiarity here. I'm not sure if you've noticed it, but it actually starts checked for some reason, which is fine. I've not got a problem with that. Um, but when you actually get variable two, it doesn't have a value. So this is actually printing lots of invisible, what I assume are just essentially just strings with no value, right? As soon as I uncheck it, it registers the value, okay? And then when I check it again, it's fine. So for some reason, sometimes on startup, these checkboxes just have no value. No idea why that is, um, but you can just fix that with deselect. So copy and paste this. And basically, once after we've packed it, we just say def check two dot deselect. And this essentially means that the box is unchecked when you start up the window. See that there? And now when I print, it'll just print not checked. And there won't be any problem. No idea why it has that problem on startup. I didn't code this, so it doesn't really matter. But anyway, there's... Uh, just a basic overview of how check buttons work and how sliders work. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed.